In this video, we'll talk about acute pancreatitis, which is a reversible pancreatic parenchymal injury associated with inflammation. In acute pancreatitis, there is a sudden onset of abdominal pain and a abnormal elevation of pancreatic enzymes in the blood. The most common causes of acute pancreatitis is either alcohol abuse or gallstones. In this video, we are going to talk about the pathology in detail, so stay tuned till the end. So let me orient you to the pancreas anatomy first. Here is the pancreas, here is the head of the pancreas, here is the tail of the pancreas and it kind of uh, touch the duodenum. Here is the gallbladder, liver and the stomach just for your reference. The pancreas plays vital role in terms of digestion. It secretes several digestive enzymes and many hormones. In acute pancreatitis, there is inflammation of the portions of the pancreas which lead to problems. In a moment, we would, we would try to understand how the pancreatic function is abrogated due to these lesions. Now, let us talk about the etiology of acute pancreatitis. One of the major causes is excessive alcohol intake. Second most common cause is basically uh, gallstone which can block the common bile duct. And this can also lead to uh, uh, pancreatitis. Now there could be traumatic injury, infection due to specific viruses uh, like mumps, like Coxsackie virus, etc. There could be metabolic disorders that lead to pancreatitis. There could be ischemia and genetic factors that might lead to pancreatitis as well. So the etiology of the acute pancreatitis can be remembered by a nice mnemonic known as get smashed. G stands for gallstones and E stands for ethanol. These are the two major and common causes of acute pancreatitis. T stands for trauma, S stands for steroid abuse, M stands for mumps virus that can cause acute pancreatitis, A stands for autoimmune component which might lead to pancreatitis, S stands for scorpion venom, H stands for hyperlipidemia, E stands for ERCP which is a treatment procedure for pancreatitis and D stands for drugs which has the potential to, uh, or to lead to the um, pancreatitis. Now let's talk about the clinical presentation of acute pancreatitis. So obviously there is pain in the epigastric area which can radiate towards the back as well. There is vomiting, abdominal tenderness, low grade fever and the patient is systemically unwell. There is also tachycardia and the diagnosis is based on all these symptoms we, which we talked about and serum amylase level is one of the common diagnostic marker in this case. So here is the pancreas, we cut a cross section of the pancreas, we can see a view like this. Here these are the endocrine part of the pancreas, these are the exogen, exocrine part of the pancreas which secretes digestive enzymes. Now within the exocrine part there are pancreatic acini. These acinar cells secrete several digestive enzymes which goes to the pancreatic acinar duct and gets collected and released into the proper portion of the uh, proper portion of the digestive tract now there are zymosin granules which are present in these acinar cells and all these enzymes which are supposed to be used for digestion are secreted in a premature or in an inactive format now pancreatic juice contains majorly water but 2% of that is also enzyme and these enzymes are pancreatic amylase, lipase, uh, phospholipase, trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, uh, carboxypeptidase and basically procollagenase. Remember all of these uh, enzymes, trypsinogen uh, which would give rise to trypsin, chymotrypsinogen which would give rise to uh, chymotrypsin are released in an inactive format and that ensures that there is no damage with the within the internal cellular machinery. So all these things are collected in the uh, acini and insulin, glucagon, somatostatin can be secreted by the endocrine part of the pancreas. Now pancreatic amylase has normal function of breaking down polysaccharides into monosaccharides and normally the ends the, these pancreatic amylase is secreted into or within these uh, acinar system. But in acute pancreatitis, when there is damage of these acinar cells, the enzymes are released into the near vicinity, which can possibly damage the overall uh, components of the pancreas. 
so protease lipase all these kind of enzyme kind of leaks out and they are no more in a in an uh, pre format so now they are active they can actually lead to problem in the overall uh, overall pancreas basically protease enzyme damage the cells and vasculature lipase enzyme can also lead to fatty necrosis of the pancreas you can ensure you can understand that each of the cells have plasma membrane and if there is lipase they would obviously damage the membrane of the cells so all these enzyme leakage is a big issue in case of acute pancreatitis so let us zoom into the acinar cell to understand what happens but before that at this point of time it's quite clear that leakage of the amylase into the blood is one of the hallmark signatures in acute pancreatitis now alcohol cholecystokinin bile acid all of these things can lead to excessive calcium release from the internal store which is basically the endoplasmic reticulum the ip3 receptor allows the leakage of calcium into the cytosol so obviously in the cytosol calcium concentration would increase that in turn activate the ori1 um, calcium dependent calcium channel which further increase the calcium level so what really happens in the acinar cell is a calcium overload then this calcium overload can lead to the opening of mitochondrial uh, mitochondrial uh, transition pores that lead to change in the mitochondrial membrane potential if the membrane potential is changed atp production is hampered so atp is depleted all of these kind of factors in a combination lead to the necrosis or the death of the cells acinar cells so the content of the acinar cells are released in the near vicinity causing to the further problems so overall the molecular patho pathology of acute pancreatitis involves premature trypsinogen activation dysfunctional calcium signaling impaired autophagy endoplasmic reticulum stress unfolded protein response and overall mitochondrial dysfunction and atp depletion so all of these are based on latest research now what is the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis so obviously there would be pain in the epigastric area vomiting and the pain can also radiate to the back all of these are kind of like clinical symptoms but uh, this has to be paired with blood test for serum amylase and lipase all of these level has to be actually uh, elevated more than 3 times than the normal also the ab upper abdominal uh, usg can help in diagnosis basically arterial blood gas is another good measure in this case so overall diagnosis is twofold one is basically the blood based test and another is imaging based test and let's talk about the treatment options treatment options involves supportive care which uh, aims to give the pancreas rest and recover by itself iv fluids and aggressive hydration is required so pain management can be done typically with opioids and antiemetics would be used for nausea and vomiting while the supportive care is running the goal is to treat the underlying cause so most of the common cause of acute pancreatitis is twofold either gallstones so gallstones can be treated with the help of the um, ERCP procedure and basically alcohol intake is another problem so reduction of alcohol intake is another kind of like treating the re root cause then nutritional support has to be provided basically pancreas has to be in rest so the food has to be uh, ingested with the help of uh, specific ways so there are enteral feeding paradigms which are preferred over uh, so there are uh, other feeding paradigms which can be used called parenteral uh, mode of feeding uh, which basically put the nutrient into the blood whereas enteral feeding kind of like um, put the food in terms of a catheter to the portions uh, downstream to the pancreas such that the pancreas pancreas doesn't has to perform its job and it has its rest to uh, 
perform all the recovery kind of functions so this is how acute pancreatitis can be managed and it is treatable based on the situation but if it goes to chronic pancreatitis that has bad implications so i hope this video is helpful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe go to our facebook page or instagram page to get more of these notes and flashcards links are provided in the description you can support our channel using super thanks your small support is our motivation to make more and more such content see you in next video